see. First, I'd like to begin with uh, the sculpture installation here. This was the last piece I made. I completed in September. Uh, this, uh, the title of this uh, piece is uh, Cosmic Tree Number no. 3. It's the third in the series of uh, work I've done in this theme. And uh, initially, I completed this part first. And it was going to be a standing piece alone. But then I found out that as I was uh, trying to take this piece out from my basement studio, it was too big. So I decided to expand it, added some more pieces, and, you know, it grew. And because of that, I thought maybe I should just expand further and make it an installation type of work instead. So I completed it as an installation piece. Uh, the whole idea behind my cosmic tree works are from the dream I had back in, uh, in the late 1980s and 1990s. I had a series of really strange dreams. And one of them, uh, I dream about being in the center of the universe, where all around me I had this swirling orbs of light, which I thought was a bunch of suns, a zillions of suns, uh, you know, surrounding me and moving about. And right in the center, I so I saw a uh, you know, dark, true light forms that kept changing and whatnot. And it was uh, uh, the strangest part of the whole dream was that I feel enormous energy, energy enough to you know, create the whole universe sort of feeling. And I woke up and I literally fell down from the bed. Thankfully, I dragged the blankets along with me so I didn't hit my head or anything. But, but the dream kept on. You know, so just about everything I draw or uh, made, I feel like there were parts of the tree. So that, that whole, you know, uh, dream became sort of like a basic background behind all my work since then. So, and uh, so with that, I don't try to create the dream. If I were to create the dream, it would be better in a computer graphic form where I, I could see the movements and all that, you know, glittering lights and all that. But I'm a sculptor. So basically, I would say all these are not the dream itself, but the f inspiration I derive from it. So it's a lot different than the dream itself. So it's sort of excuse to make a sculpture out of it. But, uh, <laughs> but I see these almost as a sort of a symbol symbol for the whole cosmic, the way I see it. And some of these forms, I get it from the uh, plants. I do a lot of gardening stuff, so there's a lot of plant-like forms and not. And then I get these, uh, what, these branches from my yard. So, and, uh, and so with the I had a show about several years ago where I had uh, what called parts of cosmic tree. And I made a piece about this size where there were whole what, uh, form filled with these uh, painted stuff. And I thought, gee, that's nice. It came out really beautiful. And I thought if I could make a larger version of it, I would be really interesting. So I made these pieces, a larger version of these pieces. And uh, so I call these uh, cosmic leaves. And people ask me how, what's inside of this and how I made these. And so here I brought uh, a material here. Yeah. This is a structure of wires and uh, uh, wire, this is a hardware cloth. This is a structural part of it. So I have all these wires, a bigger wire than this for these bigger pieces, about four or five uh, what lines of wire surrounding bordering the, this piece. And then inside of it is this hardware cloth, hardware cloth. And, uh, and right over it, I glue on a fabric, a cotton batting, actually. 
two or three layers of cotton battings on each side. I glued them on, and, uh, and I formed the background. And then I uh, decided to uh, cover it with the paintings, coloring paintings. And what I did was, here, I paint the canvas with a painting like this. A little bit smaller. And if I didn't like the painting, they become a <laughs> part of the piece is what happened. And then I, like, like with that piece here, number, excuse me, my bob here, hold on to it. Like this piece here. This, all of the pieces in this uh, uh, particular uh, leaf form are from one canvas painting. I just about used every single piece that I can find of that canvas and stuck onto it. So what I did was basically I had a painting, but I cut it into pieces and recompose, compose again, with me, make a whole new composition out of it. And I hardly ever changed any paintings from that. And, uh, and then I grew on a thread over each piece. Yeah. But this I did with my first group of work, first 10 pieces that I showed back about seven eight years ago. I used straight directly from the canvas to, uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the piece itself. But the recent pieces, I, once after I put the pieces, I repainted it over again. The reason was that I found that though uh, I was using the same color and was kind of getting bored, so I wanted to repaint and re, you know, reuse it. So some of these later pieces like this, I repainted it. And then I added some more textures by using the thread patterns over it. Which I thought was meaningless. I was kind of getting pulled bored with the, you know, the surface. So I wanted to make more interesting patterns. So I got into it, and people asked me, "God, I must be crazy to do it." Oops. Uh, here, you know, so time-consuming type of work. Uh, but for me, it's like a meditation, meditative process. So. Uh, it's kind of relaxing. And then, and then I completed all this, and usually I don't, I make these without any sketch. Now my sculpture pieces I make without, uh, with sketch, I just, uh, sorry about that. Thank you. Great. <laughs> no, I don't have, I don't make with models. I used to do that when I was a student, and maybe one or two years afterwards, but after that, I start out with something and see what happens sort of thing. I enjoy doing that. So, and same with this, so I kept, uh, I well, added the patterns and all that, and I still thought it wasn't enough. So I added these pieces and added more, and then I made all these, uh, uh, what, knots, which I learned in Boy Scout, <laughs> and all that. And I added some more and balanced it off, and I thought, gee. And, some people thought it looked like a Native American art, which I, you know, which I thought the same. But uh, in Japan, these people see my work and they think I do these because I'm from America. And here in the United States, people think I do these because I have a Japanese background, so I don't know. <laughs> but it's funny. And then uh, these woods are from my yard. And I, uh, these are uh, cherry uh, blossom woods. They bend a little. Well, where these are also from my yard, uh, these are cherry woods. No, actual cherry woods. They're much more straight. And then I think, excuse me again, I have two other types of wood that I use. Uh, did I bring them? Sorry, I thought I brought it, but I use lilac and uh, ginkgo wood, and they all have a different color, whatever. And if they're fresh, they're easy. The bark is easy to peel off, 
I usually cut about three lines on each side if they're small with a knife, and they peel off. The only thing is if you let it, uh, you know, uh, stay on the sun, they stop breaking. You know, like they, they would still start cracking. But the larger branches, they would crack anyway, and I just leave it as it is because it looks natural. So, yeah, if you wanted to, um, you know, take the peel off, the, have a, what, bare twigs or whatever and make art projects, all you have to do is cut them into, a, you know, three different pieces that are easy to come off. Well, some of the trees are, some trees are. Like a uh, uh, lilac that I, was, I just talk, told you about, they're easier to peel off than the cherry. And uh, so, and also I made these drawings here. Uh, the title is Rhythm of Nature. I was thinking of, I, I don't know, electromagnetic waves or that sort of thing. And I was listening to music. It's, and I started out with this piece of paper here, so there's a lot of rhythm to it. I must have been listening to African music and uh, Peruvian music when I was doing this. And then uh, I completed back in about March or April. And then afterwards, I thought, why not extend it? Because you know, it looked like it looked like half through, so I wanted to extend it. And uh, so I completed this in August. And now, I, afterwards, I look at the, I took a photograph of this, and uh, looking at the photograph, I feel like I wanted to expand more, <laughs> keep on extending it more and more. But these are from ink. These are waterproof uh, black ink, and these colored ones are acrylic inks. Yes? Did you purposely like, create ripples on the edges so it wasn't such a hard, straight edge? No, it came with a paper. Yeah, I came with a paper. I'd like to say I did it, but it came with a paper. <laughs> yeah. But I wanted to create sort of like a three dimensional type of effect, so I had a kind of like a whirlpool type of effect here, whatnot. I wanted kind of thing to move around more. But I think uh, here, when I was doing this, I was listening to a different type of music. It must have been more calmer music or whatever. It doesn't do much. <laughs> Yeah, I did that same with these other drawings, saying, you know, listen to music and whatnot. And for me, two-dimensional works are kind of like a meditative process for me. Whereas with the three-dimensional works, it's I'm much more aggressive, more creative for me anyway, process for me, because I have to move around and work around. So, yeah. And that's about it. Any questions or any other questions? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I made these as a potential in case if though if this is too heavy for the wall, I would have some other place to put. At the same time, I thought visually they would make it interesting for me itself. So, so I made as a both uh, for additional support and at the same time a visual element, visual form. So. Yeah. This one I did much more Baroque type, more, I mean, a lot more uh, elements to it than the, some of these other simple ones. The, uh, yeah. And like I said, how I make these, I have no idea at the first. It just, you know, things just leads me away. I compose it, but yeah. I had a lot of fun time with these threads too and whatnot, but yeah. Being playing with the knots and stuff. It looks really fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did. Except I have to be careful when I'm loading all these, you know, they're breakable. So I have to, yeah, additional. The, the fancier I get, the more I have to worry about, you know, uh, protecting it from getting breaking. I, I was imagining, like, what, like, how much damage could be done to them if, like, in storage and things like that. Like when you, if you like take them and put them somewhere else. Yeah, well, if there's a damage, it, it, 
I leave it as it is. It's I just I see. Part of the news, People won't know. <laughs> they think it's, it's like, in fact, it, I think it's something did happen with this piece. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Uh, there was a little bench sticking out there. Uh, yeah. It got broken in the process of bringing it here. I thought, gee, I like it as it is. So I left it as it is. Yeah, I would never have noticed that. No, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it was an unnecessary element. So that's why it happens. That's the way I look at things. Anything else? Yeah. If that's it. Thank you. Thank you for coming.